Welcome to the fourth part of this Cura tutorial. In this part we are going to be covering speed, cooling, support and build plate adhesion. So let's start with speed. If we left click to drop down the speed menu we'll find there are two elements that we can change. Print speed and travel speed. Print speed is the speed that the nozzle will be moving at while it is putting down plastic. This is for the shell walls and the infill. I have set mine at 60 millimeters a second. You can set this number higher and if you do so your print time down here will go down. So the higher that number the faster your prints will be. However if you set that number too high, the printer might not be able to put down enough plastic in the given time and you will end up with layer skipping. Travel speed. Travel speed is the speed when the printer is not printing. So when it's moving between two elements where there's no printing in between. So if I had an object over here on the far right and an object over here on the far left and there was nothing printing in between, it's the speed of which the nozzle is moving between these two points. The next element we're going to look at is cooling. Cooling, when enabled, turns the fans on your 3D printer on. If you do not have the fans on your 3D printer on, the layers of plastic may not be cool by the time the printer comes around and prints the next layer. I always have my fan cooling on just to be safe as this if you don't have the fans turned on you might end up with the model sinking down and causing elephant's foot which is a print deformity. The next thing we're going to look at is supports. So currently, I don't have any supports on this model. So this model is printing in midair. However, if I turn supports on, it will re-slice the model. This may take a second. And there we go. So as you can see, supports have been enabled. So now there are supports under my model supporting where the print printer is going to be printing. Without them, the printer would go up, start printing in midair, and fail. However, having too many supports can be a bit of a pain because you have to remove them afterwards. A way to fix this problem is to make sure that your model is touching as much of the build, of the build plate as possible. So if I just like so, when it reslices it, Then I go into layers. As you can see, there is much less support now. So having these supports will uh, increase your print time considerably as it has to lay all these support structures down first. A way you can change this and reduce your print time a little bit is by selecting different types of support placement. Everywhere means the printer will put supports anywhere it thinks that there may be an issue with printing for instance in this hole and under this bone here however if you switch this to only touching build plate you'll see the only supports that are created are the ones touching the bill plate 
and any supports up here will not be generated. As you can see, those extra supports up there are now gone. This will vary from model to model and you'll have to do it by eye. Look at your model and see if the overhangs or the gaps on the higher parts of the model need support or not. If they're small enough, they most likely won't need support. However, if there are quite steep overhangs, you might want to think about having supports everywhere. And finally, build plate adhesion. First element we're going to look at in build plate adhesion are the different types involved. So the first type is a skirt. Again, just got to wait for it to reslice. A skirt is where your 3D printer will go around the model once and lay down a layer of plastic. But it'll only lay down one layer. As you can see here, there's that layer. What that does is it preps the nozzle. So it gets the nozzle ready for printing and it will, tell, it will show you if there is consistent plastic coming out of the nozzle. The second type is brim. Like the skirt, the brim is around the model. However, it's more than one layer around and it will print as, as close to the model as possible as you can see here. So the brim in this case is touching all of the supports. So what the brim is helping it do is the first layer of the actual print and not the, uh, and not the build plate adhesion allows the first layer of your print to stick better because it's already attached to a bit of plastic. Without a brim there is a chance that your model may not stick to the actual build plate, however the brim gives it something to stick the first layer to stick onto. You can also change the width of your brim. This can help stabilize your model if your model is considerably tall. Also, by decreasing this number, you will decrease your print time. And the last type is a raft. This will take considerably longer to print. A raft is the 3D printer laying down an entire layer of plastic under your model. This gives you the added benefit of having a print that is printing onto plastic. As you can see here, it's printed an entire raft underneath. So that's what the model looks like with the raft on. As you can see, it's under everything there. This gives your print a higher chance of success as it's printing onto plastic, where it's un more unlikely to come loose than on the either aluminium, brass, or glass print bed. However, putting a raft on adds a lot of time to your prints. Finally, once you've done all these settings, to print your model all you have to do is click save to file, save it as a g-code and then put it on your printer in the recommended way that your printer takes the files. This could be a memory stick, a SD card, a micro SD card, or directly from a computer. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.